hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you do not know me, I am Ren and welcome to my channel. Before I get started, I wanted to ask a question that is completely unrelated to today's video and that is how was your Halloween weekend? Mine was good, I went out to the club with my friends and I just kind of chilled out. Uh, I'm not really a people person. So it's kind of just in my own world, doing my own thing. Anyways, today's video makes me pretty upset. Uh, I was scrolling through TikTok and happened to come across a video where this mother was vlogging about her and her four kids living in a one-bedroom apartment. It will be seven people living in a one-bedroom apartment. As you can read in the caption above, we're a family of six going on seven living in a one-bedroom apartment. As the kids grow older, that means we constantly have to adapt our environment to give them more means for privacy and extra space. When outside our environment appears cluttered, disorganized, what have you. But quite frankly, after making do for nearly three years now, I have nothing but a grateful spirit for the roof over our head. And only the instant judgment me and my husband receive. Why have so many kids if you don't have enough space for them? See, my perception is judgment comes from a place of not having the experience. When you've experienced enough, you generally don't judge people. I can tell you after everything I've been through in the past three years, there's very little I have to judge people. I would be lying if I said there wasn't a point in my life that I was so naive that I might have judged a poor person based off their appearance. And like I said, I have learned a lot. I generally look like I'm roughing it, but that's because our kids come first. I do everything I can to keep our environment clean and tidy. When it comes down to it, I could shove everything my kids have in one bedroom of some of these houses I see, and it would really look like nothing. We try to teach our kids to take care of what they have, be grateful for what we have, we keep praying and pushing for the growth that we want. Appreciate y'all watching. See you in the next video. The condition that the kids were li like are living in is honestly disheartening. Um, they're sleeping on foam on the floor and in the living room and dining room floors, while the parents are sleeping on a king-sized bed in their bedroom. Uh, they also have three cats, and the mother herself has said that her house stinks of like cat waste, so like cat feces. I have three cats sharing a litter box in my room and I clean it every day and my room does not stink, so I don't know how she's letting this happen. I cannot imagine having to sleep next to a dirty litter box that has not been scooped uh, to the point where it is stinking up your entire house. That much ammonia burns your nose, your lungs, it gets bad for your breathing. So it kind of blows my mind that these parents have chosen cats over their kids and are letting the cats be a risk to their children's health solely because they're way too lazy to clean out the litter box. Uh, having that many people and animals in one spot, there's gotta be some legality issues there. Um, and I have really strong opinions about this. I don't like to get too personal. Uh, but I'm about to get personal anyways. Uh, I was in a very similar living situation growing up uh, with my seven siblings for a brief period of my life. We were waiting on our house to get finished because uh, it was being renovated and they it took a lot longer than my parents initially expected. Um, so unlike the Jenkins, my parents did have a plan B and it was just a matter of getting there. Um, and since this woman likes to say to not judge her unless you've walked a mile in her shoes, I can say that as someone who grew up low income and in a situation that was very similar for a period of my life, I have walked plenty of miles in her shoes. And I can safely say that she is just not a good mother and the father is a deadbeat. Um, to sit there and say that they put their kids first is a lie. They have bunk beds now, but when I first found the Jenkins, they didn't even have bunk beds. They still don't even have mattresses. Uh, I would be far less judgmental if they at least gave the kids the one room and the kids had mattresses. However, they didn't. The kids are sleeping on foam on the living room and dining room floors. If you take a look at the parents' bedroom on their TikTok, uh, you will see that they have a very nice setup. They have a massive flat screen TV, LED lights strung up on the walls, and a PS5 and a big king-sized bed. The father refuses to work a W-2 job that'll allow him to get out of this situation because he would have to pay child support. Um, in which he has been avoiding doing and we know this because uh, the baby mama Alita on TikTok had came forward with the documentation like the legal paperwork and everything like that saying that he had abandoned one of his sons who is currently 12. She's been the one having to take care of this kid as he's been avoiding paying child support because he's not working a job 
where they can take the child support. He's been working Uber Eats, and I applaud the baby mama in this situation. She showed up on TikTok, as I said, came forward with this. Uh, I applaud her because she has been raising this child herself and having to deal with the harsh reality of her kid having to grow up, wanting to see his father who doesn't want anything to do with him. And that's just upsetting. So apparently Mr. Jenkins is just a terrible fucking person. The Jenkins parents also have said that they do not get that they had not gotten the kids bunk beds or mattresses because they just destroy them. Um, and now I am no professional, but they might be doing that because of the situation they're in. From how the mother has described it, it sounds like it is from stress. We'll see if they were lying about that or not, uh, based on how long the bunk beds that their audience got them lasts. Um, it's so awful because imagine you have no space for yourself. You go to school and after a long day, you're just unable to sit down in peace or take a nap or play with your toys without being interrupted by like six other people. The parents who have the only room with a massive bed probably don't understand this because they have that that luxury of laying down in a big comfy bed after a hard day in the peace and quiet but that same privilege is just not extended to the children who probably need it more since they're still growing they're attending school they help with the chores and you know they're up early but they don't get that luxury you know the man who does uber eats deserves the room in the PS5 more than the children who didn't ask to be in this situation. I also wanted to point out that as a kid growing up in a situation like this, nothing ever feels like it's truly yours when it's all in the living room. Um, like my stuff didn't feel like it was my stuff because all your toys or personal items are just in a common area. It feels like it's just everyone's stuff that they call yours. Anyone can walk up and grab it, anyone can break it, anyone can use it. It doesn't belong to you, it belongs to everyone as a shared item. And you have nowhere to put the things you don't want touched because you don't have a room. <laughs> I remember things I enjoyed getting thrown away or chewed up by the dogs or I'd make these like cardboard doll houses that would get tore up by the dog once more or my younger siblings or my mother wouldn't know what it was and would throw it out. You know, I couldn't put it anywhere besides common areas in the house, even things that weren't arts and crafts that I just made myself one day. I couldn't really kick like I couldn't really keep that safe unless I could fit it in a bag so I could carry it with me all the time. The parents in the Jenkins household wouldn't understand this because A, they have a room and B, they're not a kid that needs toys to entertain themselves with for stimulation and healthy growth they just don't have a need for that much stuff like these children do and i'm sure they never grew up sleeping in the living room to understand how upsetting and frustrating this situation is they have a nice ps5 like the parents have a nice ps5 that they can keep nice because they have a room to keep it in imagine how the kids feel with nice toys that they cannot keep nice because it's in a common area of the house and anyone can touch it. It's frustrating and it like breaks my heart for them because I understand what they're going through. The mother of these kids is essentially bragging about, about being able to fit all four of their kids' things into one room of the houses that they see. That's not a flex. <laughs> it's kind of like growing up in the opposite of a hoarding situation where you can't keep things because everyone else is touching it or it takes up too much space and it has to go and you know space is important especially when there's that many people in one small house when you grow up and you finally get a taste of having your own things and having a place to put them it gets hard to let go of those things meaning you just latch on to everything and you want to keep it and these kids are going to have to either get therapy to train themselves out of this or just do it themselves. And no child should have to fix that part of them because their parents were just so selfish and negligent that they just kept their kids in this situation to the point where they feel the need to do that. These parents do not understand because they're not the ones living like this. They're living like normal people under the same roof as kids that are living like they're in a homeless shelter. It's gross, 
and they're choosing to have more kids in this situation. Again, they have a fifth child on the way. And she said that she doesn't plan on stopping having kids. And that's the fucked up part. They're choosing to have more kids while making their kids' lives the most uncomfortable it could possibly be. And I also wanted to mention that the mother herself has said that they have been dealing with fleas and head lice. And again, I have three cats and I don't have fleas jumping around. I've never seen a flea just crawling up my skin or on my bed. Um, I've never had that issue because all my cats are flea treated. Uh, so the fact that these kids are having to sleep next to a litter box with cat feces in it, having to deal with head lice, which is wildly uncomfortable. We've probably all gotten lice at least like once in our life for like a day. And, you know, treating it is uncomfortable, but they've said that this has been going on for months. And when it comes to the head lice going on for months, those kids are scratching their heads. They probably have like open sores. It probably hurts for them to be treated. Like they're probably so uncomfortable because of the fleas and the lice and the smell of the house. And again, these, this man has another child that he's just completely neglected and abandoned and does, doesn't want anything to do with and isn't even paying the child support for like and yet there's still people who are in support of them i've seen tiktoks being like we should learn not to judge and then talk about the jenkins family when it's like they put themselves in this situation number one this thing just got her head stuck under the closet but before I go, I would like to mention that the kids uh, did end up with bunk beds. However, they probably would not have gotten bunk beds had it not been for the audience that the Jenkins have accumulated, you know? The parents did not buy these kids bunk beds at first. They prioritized getting a PS5 over getting their kids like actual beds to sleep in. And when they did get the beds, it wasn't even them who got it for the betterment of their kids. The people on TikTok that bought it for the betterment of the lives of those kids. And and I just wanted to point that out because as much as I hate that people are buying things for them, I do understand that they're probably buying it because otherwise the kids still would have been sleeping on foam cots on the floor. The parents probably would have never even gotten them a bed. But the living situation that they're in is disgusting. It is infested with fleas and head lice, like the mother has said this herself, and it stinks. This is something that the mother herself has said too because of the cats and the fact that they probably don't take care of the cat's litter box like they should be. The father is putting his pride about not paying child support above these children don't deserve this. They deserve so much better. And as someone who, again, was in a situation similar to that as a child, I understand how frustrated these kids are and how unfair it feels. And we did end up getting into something that was way more comfortable and fitting for us all. Um, but my parents did have plans to get us out of there, unlike the Jenkins, whose plans is to get a mini house that doesn't even include the kids in their future. Because if it did include the kids, they would probably look into getting like a double wide trailer that could house them all affordably. Uh, because trailers are a great cheap housing option. I will never not say that. I really genuinely hope that these kids end up somewhere else where they are provided everything that they need, more toys, more stimulation, their own spaces. Anyways, rant over. If you would like to support me and my channel, you can subscribe and leave a comment. If you want to buy my next coffee, you can subscribe to my Patreon or become a channel member by hitting the join button right next to the subscribe button. Anywho, I'm Ren. I'm tired, and thank you for watching. Crunchy says bye-bye too. Crunchy say bye.